Hello, my name is Nathan George and I'm CTO of the Sovereign Foundation. Hi, I'm Steve Curran. I work for Cloud Compass Computing and I'm consultant for the BC government. So Hyperledger Ares really grew up out of the efforts that we were building with Hyperledger Indy and a blockchain for distributed identity. And we realized that the client components of that that enabled the peer-to-peer -peer protocol were really something that was more reusable than just what we were doing in the Indy project. It was something that could be extended to lots of other blockchain platforms in order to provide verifiable credentials in lots of different contexts. My involvement is a lot in defining and, and working out the protocols involved in Ares. Ares is about agents that are connecting and enabling this trust across the internet and um, a lot of that is uh, working with pr different protocols um, so I'm worried about that and then combining that with how do we deploy this in a practical way. Aries Interop Profile is a way that the community can communicate what protocols they support, what versions of the protocol they support so we can enable interoperability without having to use all of the same software so we can independently build our software and yet know uh, with confidence that it will work together. Yeah, Ares is built out of a lot of small bite-sized standards to make it so that the different software solutions can talk to each other and that the information sharing works the way we hope it would work. And so these interop, interop profiles are a good way for us to revision what is supported at a particular point in time and so that we can continue to support that going forward and make sure that these solutions will work together with each other going into the future. I'm most excited about the uh, possibilities it's open. Each time I uh, attend a, a discussion where we talk about the use cases, I get so excited about the different things that are possible, the things that become safe to do on the internet, the things that become easy to do with minimal overhead, the possibility that we can actually trust each other on the internet without having to gather all sorts of extra stuff to see if we really, really want to trust that other person that we're working with make it so that we don't have to go in person to do every little transaction, but we could actually do them online. Well, it, it makes it so that digital systems work more like regular in-person human systems. And so it, it enables a lot of use cases and data flows that were really hard to build before. And it also means that you get to participate in making your digital systems successful um, and be part of how the information sharing occurs, which gives you more control and more opportunity. We see a lot of different use cases that are really exciting. Um, in addition to what's going on with government issuers and government agencies, we're seeing a lot of folks building protocols for compliant payments for all sorts of different things that you might make into assets on blockchains so that you can exchange not only the asset but the information that's needed for regulatory compliance and you can combine things from different domains or different use cases, whether that be using financial data with your employer or whether that be using you know, things from your bank in order to get into your, your um, medical tracking or help with your, your insurance claims and other things. So you know, there, really there's a lot of possibilities and one of the things that's neat about this kind of uh, credential signing is that it really spans lots of use cases. Ares is an interesting protocol because it happens at the client side. So it provides wallet tools and key management tools that lots of the other platforms can use in lots of different ways. So we do a lot of integration with the other technical groups. The identity working group at Hyperledger has an implementers call where we coordinate between the Indy project, the Ursa project, the Ares projects, and other projects that are trying to build identity portions to their solution. And then we also have a lot of bridges into the other special interest groups where they're looking at use cases that have a lot of identity problems to solve. Because it's not just about sharing the data, it's about sharing that data safely and securely so that the privacy is preserved. So whether that be the healthcare working group or whether that be the financial group, there's a lot of interesting ways to get involved. I think the first step is to join edX and take the courses that I've created. Yeah, Stephen's done a good job <laughs> of making a bunch of courses so that you can use to learn a little bit more about what's going on in the community. And like with any open source project, it, don't be quiet. Go ahead and show up to the meetings. Everyone is really welcoming, both on the email list, Rocket Chat, or you know, even at the in-person meetings and conferences. And we really like to hear from you. What you're doing might be something that one of us has already tried to address. It might be something totally new we haven't heard of. Either way, we want to see how this thing that we've built might help you, and we want to see what we can do to, to help you get what you need out of the system. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you on an Aries Working Group call soon.